Hey everyone, welcome to ISTQB Foundation exam question and answer series. And in this video, I'm going to cover another five ISTQB Foundation exam questions with explanation and how you are going to attempt ISTQB Foundation level exam. So question number 16, if you see here, says which of the following is a benefit, okay, is a benefit of early and frequent feedback, right? So what is the benefit of early and frequent feedback? We have to select one option out of these four. So let's go ahead and read. It improves the test process for future projects. It forces customers to prioritize their requirements based on agreed risks. It prove it provides a measure measure for quality of changes and the last one is it helps avoid requirement misunderstanding right so if you see closely these points let's go ahead it improves the, with the first one it, it improves the test process for future project right this is not the benefit of early and frequent feedback the process test process for future project is not dependent on early and frequent feedback so this option is off okay it forces customers to prioritize their requirements based on agreed risk that's also not correct because it doesn't it's not there is nothing forcing customer to prioritize the requirement based on the agreed risk right because requirement prioritization uh, you, it, it's not forced on the customer right so that's basically you know straight away out it provides a measure for quality of changes no that's also so not true because benefit of early and frequent feedback is not a measure okay it's not measuring something that's also incorrect so the correct answer is d it helps avoid requirements misunderstanding right and if you see closely early and frequent feedback basically is that you are providing early feedback in the requirements or initially that means any requirement misunderstanding can be clarified early itself due to the early and frequent feedback so that's the correct answer d it helps avoid misunderstanding requirement misunderstanding moving to the next one 17 so the reviews the question says the reviews being used in your organization have the following attributes okay so this is more of a static testing question because we are coming here for the reviews and the attributes are so there is a role of a scribe okay so the first thing they are saying there is a role of a scribe the main purpose is to evaluate quality the meeting is led by the author okay and there is an individual preparation and the review report is produced right so mostly if you'll see reviews individual preparation or static testing the individual preparation is required okay so these are some of the common attributes of some of the review okay so what they are saying is these are the attributes and based on that which of the following review types is most likely being used if these are the at these are the attributes that are present in that particular review okay so if you see informal review no because you have the author there all right and it's more of review report is there is to evaluate quality the re there is a role of scribe so it's not an informal review okay then we go to the next one walk through okay so basically yeah this is the correct answer walk through is the correct correct answer because this is led by the author right and individual preparation is anyways required in all the reviews review report is produced okay and this is led by the author and purpose is to evaluate quality all right and the role of scribe is also there so all of these attributes map to walkthrough if you go through the course you will see that it maps to the walkthrough and then not the technical in review or the inspection okay so the correct answer is b which is walkthrough for this particular question because of these attributes the best matches walkthrough okay moving to the next one which of these statements is not you'll see that not is highlighted not a factor that contributes to successful reviews so there will be out of these four there will be three factors that will contribute to successful review these questions are little confusing because of this not you have to make sure that you pick the point that does not contribute to successful review because three will be contributing to successful review so let's go ahead and see what all options are there participants should dedicate adequate time for review right so obviously this is incorrect because this contributes this point contributes to successful reviews right this contributes to successful reviews so 
this is out because we are looking for the, the point that does not contribute. Splitting large work products into small parts to make the required effort less intense, right? Now this is also, this point also contributes to successful review. So if we are looking for the not fact, not a factor, this is also out because splitting a large work into a small part contributes to successful reviews, right? Participants should avoid behaviors that might indicate boredom, exasperation or hostility to other participants, right? Now this is also a factor that contributes to successful review. So this is also out, right? So A, B, C are incorrect. That means only D is left. So D is the correct answer. Failures found should be acknowledged, appreciated and handled objectively. Okay. Now this, when you read first time, it might look confusing, but during the review process, you do not find failures, right? So failures are not found during review process. So this contradicts during the review process, you find defects because you go through the document, you, you can find defect, but not the failures. Okay. So that is why D is the correct option for question number 18, which of the statements is not a factor that contributes to successful review. Okay. Now moving to the next one, which is number 19, which of the following is a characteristic of experienced based test technique okay now experience based test technique is basically on a high level it relies on the testers knowledge so wherever you see rely on the testers knowledge you'll see that yeah we can see it straight away here right relies on the testers knowledge but still we'll go through the points so you understand what other points say and how ISTQB exams can become a little confusing right so test cases are created based on detailed design information right so experience based right so experience is not is is as per the testers knowledge and experience so not based on the detailed design so this is out items tested within the interface section uh, interface code section are used to measure coverage absolutely not this is not the characteristic of experience based testing the techniques heavily rely on testers knowledge of software and the business domain that's the correct answer right because here you'll see rely on testers knowledge is experience based testing technique the test cases the last one you'll see that the test case are used to identify deviations from requirements no right because we have one option and we have already found so obviously this is incorrect okay so that's the fourth question of this video moving on to the last question question number 20 of this particular uh, question number five of this video and qu question number 20 overall so you are testing a simplified apartment search form okay which only has two search criteria okay so two search criteria one is floor another is garden type so floor has three possible options ground first second or higher full floor okay which is basically second floor so three options right ground first second garden type with three possible options no garden small garden large garden okay so three possible options for floor and three possible options for garden only apartments on the ground floor have garden right so here only apartments on the ground floor have gardens the form has built-in validation mechanism that will not allow you to use the search criteria which violate this rule so only if you select ground floor the search criteria will come for the garden okay if you select first floor or second floor automatically because there is a built-in validation small and large garden basically it won't show you the garden options okay so it will be most like no garden all right if you select Select first and second because by default ground floor only comes with the gardens now each test has two input values each test has two input value floor and garden type so basically when you have the test case okay there are two input values because there are two fields right so you select the floor and you select the garden type all right so each test case has two input value floor and garden type you want to apply equivalence partitioning here so you want to apply equivalence partition to cover each floor and each garden type in your test right so we have to now apply so we have to ensure we want to have a equivalence partition to see that we are covering each floor and each garden type in our test what is the minimal 
Okay, so what they are asking is what is the minimal number of test cases to achieve 100% equivalence partition coverage, right? So now here, if we go ahead and work a little bit on this, so let's say we have test case one, okay? So if we select, say for example, ground floor, right? Now we, we selected ground floor. So with ground floor only, we'll get garden options. So small garden and large garden. So with ground floor, so basically, if we talk about equivalence partition in the floor option, we have three, right? So we have ground floor, first floor, and we have second floor. With ground floor, so we have covered the floor variations, three possible variations for the floor. Now we have to ensure to get 100% equivalence partition coverage for the garden. We have to get options or basically test cases that cover all of these garden types as well, right? So with the first floor, we know no garden will be by default tested, right? And second floor also has the validation. So these are the two test cases, okay? So we can say TC2 and 3, okay? In test case 1, when we select ground floor, one partition is that with ground floor, we get the garden, right? So we have the small garden, okay? No garden has been covered here and here as well, along with different floors. So we have selected the small garden. And if we take one more test case, for example, if we take one more test case, wherein we say ground floor with large garden, right? So that covers all the garden types, small garden, large garden, no garden, and all the floors, right? So ground floor, first floor, second floor, and we'll need two test cases for ground floor. So because we want to cover all the gardens as well, so large garden and small garden. So that is why with ground floor, we have two test cases, TC1 and 4, and then two and three for the floor. So we are getting now equivalence partition coverage for each floor as well as each garden. So how many test cases? One, two, three, four. Okay. So the correct answer is four. Four test cases is the minimal number of test cases that you will need to have 100% of the equivalence partition. Okay. So that's all for this particular video on another five ISTQB foundation exam questions along with explanation and answers. I hope this was helpful. I'll see you in the next one with another five questions. Thank you very much for watching.